Hello people of YouTube, it's Deephack here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.23 and Heat Blur Simulations F4E Phantom 2 module. Welcome to tutorial 7, Sparrow Air-to-Air -air Missile. Today we're going to demonstrate the use of the M7M, in this instance, uh, semi-active radar-guided air-to-air missile. Yeah, I'm carrying four of them today on the fuselage stations. Those are stations 3, 4, 6 and 7. Note that I'm also carrying a centerline fuel tank and in this configuration, launch of the front missiles on stations 4 and 6 is inhibited. And we can only launch the rear missiles on stations 3 and 7 uh, until we jettison the centerline fuel tank, of course. Uh, this is because the, uh, the missiles won't clear the tank as they come off the rail. So uh, just be aware of that. Uh, so we're going to demonstrate how to how to launch this missile. Now this missile can only be launched with uh, a stable radar lock, and you need to retain radar lock all the way to impact. Uh, also, last video I actually had some troubles with my lights. Let's go ahead. You know, thank you to to chat for helping me diagnose my problems. Uh, my gun sight was quite uh, dim. The reticle intensity knob here controls it, so we're going to turn it all the way up today. The other thing was that my indicator lights were really dim, and that's because I had my flight instruments uh, rheostat here turned up. When you have this turned up, it illuminates your flight instruments, but it assumes it's nighttime, and so it dims all the indicator lights. So we have to actually turn this knob all the way down to zero, and then immediately you notice my indicator lights are much brighter. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a small mistake I made last time. Just be aware that that's the case. You want to adjust these settings. So, um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a little look at the lights we have on the armament panel here. You'll note that we've got four radar lights showing up. Uh, that's for stations three, four, six, and seven. Uh, so, we can confirm here we're carrying four radar missiles today. Now, note we also have a, li a light here that indicates centerline tank. That's warning us that we can't launch the front missiles, so that's just a, an indication there. Uh, in addition, um, if you're starting cold, you have this uh, missile radar standby switch. Uh, it has options for off, standby, and continuous wave. Uh, normally, you're going to have that in the off position. Uh, you would probably then put it into standby uh, if you're doing your flight. That means that the, the missiles will be uh, kind of prepped and ready to go, but for actual launch you need continuous wave on. Now note, for some sidewinders it can take up to four minutes for them to actually tune and be ready. Once they're ready, the radar lights will illuminate, so just be aware of that one. Uh, another important switch here is the interlock switch. This determines whether or not launch is inhibited until you are within parameters. Normally you're going to have that in the in position. That means that you could pull the trigger to the second detent and the missiles will not launch. Uh, if you want to override, you can flip it down into out and in that position the missiles will launch no matter what. Uh, but that probably means that you're going to waste a missile because there's no guarantee that it actually sees the target, is, in within, is within parameters and, and so on. So just be aware of that. Uh, note my radar lights just came on. Uh, we've got master arm here, of course. We're going to have to go master arm on. And uh, we're first going to drop that center line tank. So if I push center in my armament panel and I move the jetson switch all the way down to the bottom position, which is stores, I can then push the button and center line tank is away. And you'll note now that the center line tank warning light has gone out. So we now have no uh, inhibition. We can launch all four of these missiles. I can now deselect center position. So anyway, to make use of the, the sparrows, we need master arm on, continuous wave on. I would recommend interlock in. And uh, you're then going to use your pinky switch. You're going to go to the right once, gives you heaters. Right again, gives you radar. So on the side here, we want to see radar and arm. That means at this point, we are ready to go. So, I'm now going to tell Jester that I do actually want him to talk, because I previously told him to shut up. And I'm also going to tell him that I want radar, uh, scan type, give me 25 nautical miles wide. Yep. <laughs> and his response is, yep. So, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. I've let these guys pass me, so let's, uh, 
let's come around and see if we can pick up these targets. Now, maximum range of the Sparrow missile is about 25 nautical miles. Um, of course, your chance of making hits at that range is, is fairly low. Um, your kind of ideal range is somewhere in the region of 10 nautical miles. Okay, have we come around enough there? We actually have. We're, we're head on to the targets. Nice. Okay, that should make this fairly easy. Um, now, one quick thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go over the controls that we're going to make use of today. Uh, to launch the missile, we want trigger half action and trigger full action. Uh, you need to pull the trigger all the way to full action and hold it to get a launch. Uh, the gun missile pinky switch, I was using the left and right controls there. I went right twice from gun and that gave me radar. Um, what other controls are we actually going to use? That's actually it for employing the Sparrow. Uh, you don't really need to use anything else. Uh, apart from that, as always, I'm going to use my Jester context action and my Jester um, UI action buttons. Uh, the context action is the one that's important. To command him to do a lock, I'm going to press the V key, which is the default. I'm going to press that long, uh, and that will tell him to actually lock the target he has the cursor on at that time. So anyway, I think we're pretty much head on towards our targets. We are. Hopefully they'll show up on the radar pretty soon. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, do we even have the radar on? Let's, let's make sure. Okay. And yeah, we want to also Roger. focus on things that he picks up. Oh, other thing to note, you're going to want your reticle in the air-to-air -air mode, and that way you're going to get range indications and things like that. So we're going to continue inbound until we actually pick something up on the radar. Yeah, we've got faint RWR indications 12 o'clock, so they're definitely facing us. I'm now getting ground returns, so we are approaching those enemies. Uh, they're maybe just off to the right a little bit. Let's see if we can get them locked up. Hey, what I'll do, I'll cut here and I'll bring you all back once I have them on the scope. Okay, I just got the call from Jester, got some new, new bogeys checking friend or foe, so let's unpause here. You see him putting the cursor on them, and that's no IFF. We have a bogey two ship, bra, left five, 17 miles, 6,000, locking bogey, left five, 17 miles. Long press of V in, uh, is telling him to get me a lock. Mm, I think we've the target, back yeah. to standard scan pattern. Yeah, we've lost them again. Let's continue inbound. We're getting some clutter here, you see, because of the ground returns, so it might actually be a little bit difficult to get them. I think we're in a kind of look-down mode. Oh, here we go. Okay. Locked. One potato, two potato, three potato, four potato, fire. Okay. So, let's pause again. We've got new symbology, and also you'll note that uh, Jester did a count there. <clears throat> you can't immediately fire the Sparrow. It takes a little bit of time to uh, actually pick up the target and to receive information from the, the fire control system. So, wait until he gives you the fire command. Now, we've got new symbology. This is basically exactly the same as what we had for the Sidewinder. We have R Max, we have R Min here. We have our steering dot and we have allowable steering error. What we want to do is we want to maneuver to put the steering dot in the ASE and then we want to wait until we're in range. At that time, we will get an in range indication on the left here. And if we're within parameters, the shoot lights here, oops, here, 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 and here, <laughs> we have we have five of them. Those will illuminate, and at that point we can pull the trigger. Just like with the Sidewinder, we have range indications on the gun sight as well. Uh, they give us 20,000 feet at the very top, at the 12 o'clock. It's going to unwind clockwise. At the 3 o'clock position, we're at 12,000 feet to the target, and at the very bottom, we're at 3,000 feet to the target. Let's continue inbound. Oh, and let's put ourselves in the ASE. There we go, we've got shoot lights. Let's pull the trigger. And that's Fox 1. Now we need to maintain the target locked and we also want to maintain the steering dot in the middle of the ASE, if at all possible. That will give us the best chance of impact. We've got a bandit, fish bed, 12 o'clock, four miles. Okay, I'm gonna launch a second missile at this time. That's Fox 1. Let's 
see if we can get a hit here. We're getting pretty close at this stage. No, I think I still haven't hit him. Launching again. <laughs> and now we're within visual range, so my chances of getting a sparrow hit are very, very low now. And he's trying to make us overshoot. Come on, show me some of that pilot shit. Okay, we've got the brake X, that means we're too close. And we're gonna lose the lock. Okay, Four I'm gonna come away now. now. And another at two o'clock. So <laughs> We we made three launches and we failed uh, to get a kill. Oh, actually, I said I failed to get a kill. I think I see something over there, like a parachute. Did we in fact kill one? No, we didn't. I don't know what I'm seeing then. It's probably my missile yeah, striking, okay, the striking the water. Okay, I'm going to get some distance. I've still got one sparrow. We'll make a, a final attempt at that. But that is the mechanism that you would use. That's the way that you make use of the sparrow missile, despite me actually failing to get a hit there. Uh, we were head on, which is a little bit more difficult. So let's get a little bit of distance here, and then we'll come back around and we'll try one last shot. Uh, and that should serve as a, as a, a decent enough demonstration. I'll wait till I'm... Oh dear, I wasn't paying enough attention. Could have flown into the water. Okay, let's come around at this point. Make use of the tones if we can to get a maximum rate turn around here. And my targets should be somewhere out here. Yes, they are. Off to the left. And at this stage, they're going to be above me, which is going to be better. But no, no, I don't see... Oh, I think they were just off to the right. Yes. Roger. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock now. And another at 11 o'clock. No, I think I've lost them. We're probably too, too close in at this stage. In any case, uh, that is the process that you would use. I'm going to tell Jester to be quiet for a moment while I talk to you fine, fine people. Uh, crew contract. Just to dropped off scope. Back to standard scan pattern. Be quiet. Excellent. Okay, so yes, you're going to want to have your gun sight in air to air mode. Master arm on. Continuous wave on. I would recommend interlock on or in. Sorry. Pinky switch push to radar. Uh, you should ensure that you have radar and arm lights on. If you have a centerline tank, if you want to make use of those front radar missiles, you're going to have to jettison. And uh, I only ever actually launched one missile. That's kind of weird. I guess I wasn't in parameters for the others. That would explain why I didn't shoot them down. Um, yeah, just in your centerline tank, and uh, you can then make use of the rear two missiles as well. And yeah, confirm that you've got radar indications on every station that you intend to use a Sparrow from. So that's the entire process for firing an AIM-9 Sparrow. Hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.